great magician. Your clothes are red! Hey there and welcome to Disturb Reality, teaching you powerful magic integrated with social dynamics. Today we're going to be learning the riffle pass, utilizing the classic pass in a riffle motion to control a card from the middle of the deck to the top. Now we've learned the classic pass, as uh, hopefully a lot of you have learned, and now we're just going to be adding a riffling type of motion to it to cover the move, and this is uh, very popular. I have seen on TV specials, David Blaine use this method. I've seen Chris Angel use this method to control a card from the middle of the deck to the top, and you know, it is a typical sound that cards make. And so let's go through it. And this is the Artifice Tundra deck. A lot of people ask me, what is my favorite deck of cards? This is it, the Artifice Tundra deck. So let's go through and learn the Riffle Pass. I'm Jericho 20. Thanks for watching. Let's learn how to do it. Now, if you guys have not learned the classic pass, then I uh, suggest that you go back and learn that, or hopefully you're at least working on it, because this is basically the same thing with the added riffle added to it. So, it's uh, arguably easier, in a sense, because a lot of people ask about how to make their pass quieter. How do I make it quiet? I keep making noise with my pass. How do I make it quiet? And I personally equate that to me having large hands. And uh, for those of you who keep asking me, what about, I have small hands, what do I do? Well, I've never had small hands, so I haven't been in that situation. I wish I could help you. But uh, it's the same thing as people asking, hey, I live in Switzerland, how much does an invisible deck cost? Where do I get an invisible deck? Well, I don't live in Switzerland, so I don't know. Same kind of thing. Here's how to do it. So we've learned the classic pass, getting the top of the deck to the bottom. So it's the same idea, except all that's happening is we have our pinky break now. And with your hands being held here, you're going to prepare to just add that move to it. And like I was talking about with the sound, is you don't have to worry about the sound anymore because now you can just add that sound. And it covers the sound of whatever mistake sound that you were making and again this move was not designed to be invisible you guys the pass wasn't meant to be invisible so if if people look up and even if they hear this riffle uh you know they won't think anything of it as long as you give it a couple extra riffles like near the end there now granted there's the argument well this sounds different than your typical riffle which would be like that or that or that. It's more of a snappy kind of, that sounds peculiar. Well, people who don't do magic don't really know the difference. It's kind of like a video editor in the sense where, you know, if something's weird about a video, chances are you're not going to see it, but the video editor notices it every time and it bugs the hell out of them. I know that personal. This is the move. Nine of spades. People won't worry about the sound and you can just do this blatantly right in front of their eyes. They won't think anything of it. Granted, if you have the right cover, the right timing, the right pacing, if you're working your way up to learning the pass, which I'd still recommend to be your first and foremost uh, top of your priorities list as far as learning this pass series, learn the classic pass, because all the moves we're going to learn implement either the classic pass or the Herman pass. But the more uh, coversome, the more invisible ones, the m faster ones are going to utilize the classic pass, bringing the top to the bottom. Aside from that, it's pretty self-explanatory. I don't know how much more detail I can possibly go into. I would just go back, watch the classic pass, but as you're watching it, add this riffle to it, and that's all there is to it. But and play with your fingers. Maybe you only need your pinky in here. Uh, I would recommend doing this, having your index finger and your pinky in there. If you are struggling with the pass, someone left this in a comment as a tip, and I believe I've done the pass like this in the past, where 
you're holding the cards as such, and then your pinky and your index finger in the deck, and that allows you just better control, you know, as unless you're going like really slow in a demonstrative manner. But we have this, and this is just for learning. Obviously, we don't want you to be performing the pass like this, but just so you can get where your fingers should be down in your hand placement, open it up, boom. So, yeah, try that. When you are learning the pass, just put both your pinky and your index finger in there. Be pushing slightly to the left. Open that packet up, back down, riffle, and you can do it face up. It's super cool looking, and people will still be tripped out by it because they don't know what's happening. Once you feel comfortable with this, just start performing it to a mirror, to a camera, to your pet dog, or your tiny little kitty, and then move your way up to, uh, to real people. The pass isn't something you should just be going and trying to perform willy-nilly as if it's a magic trick. Sleight of hand is extremely different from a magic trick in regards to exposing, exposing it. There's a lot more room for error with sleight of hand moves and slights. So just keep practicing your classic pass. Get your index finger in the middle of the packet there. If you are struggling, you small hand guys, or if the cards are spilling everywhere, this will help you keep a balance better. And as soon as that clears, just up, boom, riffle down. And you are in in the clear essentially thank you for watching again i am jerick 120 teaching you powerful magic integrate with social dynamics if you want to learn how to be a magician and, uh, you know be the entertainer at the center of attention that's why we're all doing this we want to feel important right we want to feel liked that's what i wanted i'm not saying you do you probably have your different reasons that's just me personally i used magic as a way to make friends get jobs and now I make money off of doing magic. So if it's something you love, then you never know what it could lead to the future. But if you want to learn more of this stuff, and not just magic tricks, but the performance aspect and the psychology behind why you're doing what you're doing and the timing behind it and why that sound makes that sound, why that's good and why that's bad, from someone who's had 11 years of experience, you can learn from me, giving it to you, uh, all the knowledge that I have, for free on YouTube at Disturb Reality. How to Disturb Reality. And visit disturbreality.com. Put some extra coin in my purse, you know? So you guys watching these videos, you guys visiting my website, that helps me out. If you want to help me out directly, you can uh, email me at howtodisturbreality at gmail.com and I can send you a Disturb Reality t-shirt. There's also t-shirts on ProWrestlingTees.com and the Jarek120 store. But practice this move. Have fun. Like this video. Comment this video. Other alternative passes that uh, people might be interested in learning. And thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Thanks for practicing your craft. It's doing what you said you were going to do. Be inspired to learn. Aspire to disturb. And always these hands are lifting it up, my thumb is over it, these fingers come to the corner, prop that up, and now we're going to upgrade the series and start to learn the elements that make the pass invisible, starting with the invisible pass. Let's learn how to do it. As you've learned in the past, the, the, it, you know, that was a learned in the past, you know, not the pass. In the past, we learned the past, and that's what the classic, 